It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers and today's interview highlight is with Jonathan Bricker. One of my favorite interviews, but here is one of my favorite segments from the interview talking about embracing the pain and trauma and stop hiding from your demons. Uh, today's video was sponsored by mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the Hardest Worker in the Room t-shirt, the journals and the, the Inspire Change t-shirts. Before that, let's jump into this valuable highlight with Jonathan Bricker. What, what do you see in people that is the adverse effects of suppressing these demons and, and pushing them down their whole lives? Oh, they're vast. They are vast. So when you try to suppress your internal demons, your thoughts, your emotions, sensations, your memories, if we're talking, let's, if we're talking, say, about alcohol or drug use, you get addicted. You, you, you're spending a lot of your time getting a chance to use the drug or the alcohol. You can end up having a car accident. You can, you can end up blacking out. You can end up destroying your marriage. You can end up losing your job. Uh, you can end up physically injuring yourself. For people who get depressed, who don't want to think about how bad their lives are or how unhappy they are with their lives. They spend, spend they can spend their time in bed. They can uh, spend, waste a lot of time going online, uh, reading things, looking at things, getting on social media. They can uh, get involved in watching a lot of pornography and, and not engaged in life. Their lives get really small and that the consequences are vast. The consequences are almost imaginable in so many different ways. And the ultimately what we're talking about is that your life isn't moving forward, is is stagnating or is moving backwards. All the things that matter to you, family, friends, your work, your body, your spirituality, they get locked off they get sealed off and your life gets very very small and so the the consequences of avoidance are gigantic they're huge for some it even means suicide because they just can't bear the pain of the demons so i, I think this moves on to the secret to self-control so basically what you use to regain that control so for, you, for yourself, uh, how, how would you describe regaining self-control or where would somebody start? The first start to self-control is aware. You have to be aware of what it is that you're feeling inside. You have to be aware of what are the thoughts you don't want to have, what are the emotions you don't want to have, so I'll take, for example, yesterday. Uh, so I have, I'm a scientist and I also have a private practice. And I was in my practice yesterday and I was uh, working with a client who I've worked with a very long time. And she wanted to improve her running. It's one of the things that's important to her. And she said, basically, I'm afraid of going faster because I don't want to feel the physical pain of going faster and one of the things we worked on was being aware of that edge when you get to that edge and you start to feel that physical pain in in your body and practicing being aware of what that is and where is it in your body so it's noticing it's it's in looking inside and saying where in my body do i feel this pain that I've been spending a lot of time trying to push away and not experience. Now, it can also be something like there's a painful memory of experience. You know, you've had some very traumatic experiences in, in your life, Jordan, and I have I have so much compassion for that. It's, it's being willing to remember. It's being willing to remember and be aware of what is that memory that I've been not wanting to have. And it could be, so it depends on what, where, what is that thing you don't want to have to notice? So that's awareness is number one. 
Now, someone might say, I don't want to be aware of that. I don't want to be aware of that. That's painful. Well, then there's some there's some earlier work you want to do on understanding the consequences, because that question you asked me earlier, you know, what happens when people avoid? Well, you you got to get in touch with those consequences. You got to take stock. You got to take inventory, just like a, uh, if you're running a company and you've got inventory in your warehouse, you got to go around and take inventory and see what do we got here and what do we got there and how much of this do we have? You've got to take stock of what's the cost of you avoiding? What's the cost in terms of those areas of your life that matter? Usually for people, that's their physical health, that's their relationships. It could be their spirituality or relationship with God. It could be uh, their work, but you got to take stock and saying, how, what's the cost of this? Because that's what's going to make it worthwhile to be aware in the first place, because most people at first are going to say, I don't want to be aware. I'm happy not being aware. Well, are you happy? What's that costing you? And usually people are seeing in the long run, it's costing them a tremendous amount and it's not worth it. So, so, so step one is aware. Yeah, I, I, I can, for me, can 100% agree with that. I think um, the, for me recently, uh, I had this suppressed anger um, and emotion around a certain situation and I never thought about it. And it was so surreal when I started thinking about it and I kind of went through this process of understanding why I needed to do it and then the awareness came and it was like a ton of bricks this, these new emotions were coming through so i'm probably at the awareness stage and i'm starting to feel through these these like parts and these new emotions i've never felt before so what's next what's what's beyond that once you're aware now you have a place to go that's the great thing about being aware if there's some thoughts that you haven't had to, not wanted to experience now that you're aware you know now, well, what am I going to move toward? And really, the secret to self-control is the openness to notice, the openness to have the thought. So it's dropping the struggle with that thought or emotion or memory. It's not fighting it. It's making room for it. It's allowing it to be there. It's, it's accepting it in the sense that you're acknowledging it and saying, you're here, you are with me. You're, you are traveling with me as I'm going through my experience of my day. You're, this thought is with me. And I, um, I, wanna, I wanna give a, a gigantic shout out to the, the, to the behavior science that underlies it and it's called contextual behavior science. I know that's a huge mouthful, but anyone who wants to learn about it can check out contextual behavior science. They can look online. They can also look up Acceptance and Commitment Therapy Act, because uh, that, that is a, a huge influence on what I'm saying today. I call it willingness. My TED Talk, Secret to Self-Control, goes into that in, in depth. The, the point here is you practice. You practice having the thought. You say, I am having the thought about this memory. I am having the thought that I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I'll never be able to do this. If you could say it out loud, it's an interesting thing that happens. When you could say something out loud, starts to lose its power. It's kind of amazing because when you hold a thought inside your head, it's almost like you make it sacred. It's almost like you give it a lot of weight, a lot of power. And then once you put that thought out and you say it out loud, there's something interesting that really happens and you really just have to try it to know it. It's like, poof. It just starts to be like, oh, these are just words. And then if you can say it out loud again and again, like, you know, if you think, oh, I'm a loser, 
you say to yourself, loser, 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 loser. Do you see already how that the word is? Would you notice? You notice how that word is changing a little bit? Definitely, definitely. So you say it over and over again, and you think like, oh, that's crazy. But you say it over and over again, you realize this is just a bunch of words. I don't have to believe it. It doesn't sound like the word loser anymore. And you feel it inside. So that's, a, that's one technique for putting it out. There's actually a universe. I mean, I could go on. There are many, many different techniques for being able to, to really diminish the power of words. We're really talking about diminishing the power of language over you. Because, because when people are suffering, it's because language is dominating them. Language is, is controlling them. And the, and the whole point of, of what I'm saying and what I'm talking about willingness is to give you a sense of space and distance from all the thoughts you're bombarded with to all the emotions you're bombarded with and memories you're bombarded with as you walk through the day. You know, the, the, mind, the mind is a word machine. And it's always generating words. That's what it does. It's really good at doing that. When we suffer, we're stuck in the word machine. And all I'm talking about here are techniques to be able to step away from the word machine so that it doesn't control what you do and doesn't affect your actions and doesn't affect your ability to live effectively and live authentically. And there you go from Jonathan Bricker on a subject that nourished me and my mindset and my soul when I heard it from Jonathan Bricker. But the reason for that is because it's something that I wrestle with on a day-to-day -day basis. My trauma and the things that I have been through in life shape who I am and they only shape me because I've not hid from them. I've embraced them, I think about them every single day. Um, although it's painful and it's hard, it has led to much of my own personal growth. And for me, if, if I'm ever talking to somebody who is experiencing trauma or hard times, a difficult time, I always talk about them to, to embrace it. I, I, I advise them to embrace it, to talk to other people about it, to talk to the people who have been through the same thing. So this for me is one of those videos where if you can take some of this wisdom, share it with somebody else, or share your own message, your own version of this video with somebody else, through talking to them. Reach out to a friend who's been through some tough times, you know who they are, um, and talk to them about, about them. Or if you are the person, talk to somebody else and let, get it off your chest. Let them know about your tough times and your difficult times. Um, today's video was brought to you by mulliganbrothers.com. Makes all of this possible. It means we can go interview people like Jonathan Bricker. Hopefully we get to interview in person very shortly. And it's all thanks to you supporting us at mulliganbrothers.com. So thank you so much to everybody who's been over there and bought the journals and the t-shirts, thank you. Uh, if you wanna see what I get up to behind the scenes, go follow me on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother, for more, more, mama? for more behind the scenes of what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Guys, take this message, take this video with you today, and go inspire some change. Peace.